we would like to be able to sketch the response for our differential equation very quickly. And in fact, ultimately, we want to be able to do this without even bothering with uh, actually solving the equation. Uh, in this case, I'll, I'll, I will actually show you the solution. Uh, following our normal methods, we would discover that x is going to be equal to 1 half 1 minus e to the negative uh, 2t for t greater than or equal to 0. Now, you could also think of this as uh, 1 half times 1 minus e to the negative t over tau, where tau is equal to 0.5, which is also called a time constant for an exponential. Why don't we just uh, sketch what this would look like real quickly. Uh, the asymptote for this system is it's eventually going to reach a final value of 1 half. That's the steady state final value. What's it going to look like? Well, it's going to be an exponential, and the, roughly sh the rough shape is going to be like this, where it's going to asymptote towards that uh, final steady state, but take a rather long time getting there. Now, there are a few things I should note about uh, an exponential, and why don't we just first start with the exponential e to the negative t over tau. Uh, this is going to start at a value of 1, and then just like the exponential you see uh, to the left, it's going to uh, decay. In this case, uh, this has a different sign, and so it's going to have a shape like this. And what I should point out is uh, a couple things. One is that after one time constant, in other words, when t is equal to tau, then you can just plug in e to the negative uh, tau over tau, in other words, 1 over e. Well, the value of 1 over e is about 0.37. So that means that we immediately know the value of this function uh, approximately uh, after one time constant. And that also means that this distance here is about 0.63. So let's return to the graph on the left. And we can immediately point out that after one time constant, we should be about 63% of the way. So let's say that tau is equal to 0.5. Uh, and after that one time constant, uh, we should have a value of about 63% of the distance that we need to travel, uh, which in this case would be uh, 1 half times 0.63. Another way you can think about uh, all of this is that uh, the initial slope of this uh, exponential is such that if we drew a straight line uh, starting from the initial condition, that uh, it's going to be pointing at the final value after one time constant. And I'm going to draw the same thing over here. I'm going to draw a straight line. Uh, you can see my sketch isn't perfect here. But the idea is that the initial slope should be pointing at the final value such that it would reach that value after one time constant. So the initial slope points at final value after one time constant. So that's one thing to note. Uh, and essentially what we're saying here is it's worth remember that e to the negative 1 is approximately equal to 0.37. Uh, another thing that's uh, kind of helpful is that e to the negative 4.6 is approximately 0.01. So in other words, after 4.6 time constants, the uh, response has gone 99% of the uh, distance it's going to travel.
pixels within 1% of the final value. So these are two helpful things to know about exponentials, that um, after one time constant, you're at 37%. After 4.6 time constants, you're about at 1%. Uh,